Supreme Grandmaster Azrael fought his way forward through a screaming press of heretics. The sky above was a churning storm of burning petrochemical clouds and blistering dogfights. Gunfire, clashing blades, and bellowed oaths blended into a deafening cacophony. Azrael's armor was drenched in gore, as was the bone-white plate of the Terminators and Blade Guard who fought at his side. Corpses crunched and squelched under their every advancing footfall. Guns thundering, fists and blades swinging, the Deathwing hurled back the cultist mobs and butchered them to the last man and woman. Azrael led his warriors up a wide metal ramp riveted together with bone. Pistons strung with pumping muscle formed a wall to one side, while to the other the ramp dropped away towards a valley of iron and crumbling stone where loyalists and heretics battled furiously amidst ever-churning machines. Azrael's instinct was to turn and aid his battle brothers, but with Vox and Orspex useless, he had to reach high ground to regain clarity on the wider strategic situation. Striding over a carpet of the broken dead, Azrael crested the ramp and marched out onto a wide open platform. He ignored the blood-wet clots of machinery that jutted from the platform's surface, and the yellow eyes set into their dripping flanks that swiveled to follow his advance. Moving to the platform's edge, where a nest of rustled gantries and stairways led back down to the street level below, he stared out across the heaving turmoil of the battle. On the right flank, Samael and his raven wing had cut deep into the foe's lines and encircled a swath of tech mutants and cornate renegades near the foot of a clockwork edifice. The swift space marines were even now culling their victims mercilessly. The left flank, by comparison, had developed into a ferocious firefight as Dark Angel's armor met stalking Chaos Knights amidst crumbling gothic towers and thundering engines of iron and bone. Ahead, Azrael could see red armored figures battling one another furiously as the Blood Angels and the World Eaters clashed in dozens of separate conflicts. The curled spines of the Warp Forge Palace loomed overhead, looking more arachnid and menacing than ever. For all the dark grandeur of this spectacle, Azrael's attention was drawn to the ruined top of the high tower, now less than a quarter of a mile away, where the elite of the Blood Angels fought Angron. The fury of that fight had blown out walls and sent avalanches of masonry raining down into the street around the tower. Angron and his enemies now battled in full view between the surreal remnants of interior walls, columns and denuded stairways. Corpses clad in red or gold armor were scattered everywhere. Azrael wished for a moment that his vision was not so keen for it showed in inescapable detail the catastrophic wounds that had reduced once proud warriors to so much mangled metal and meat. Some bodies even dangled from lengths of twisted rebar that jutted from the walls, impaled with tremendous force, and left to hang like trophies. The Redemptor Dreadnought sprawled, burned and broken against a shattered column, Rich red blood coated every surface and drooled in clotted ropes down the tower's walls. Angron was himself, torn and blooded. His armor buckled, greasy smoke boiling from the flames that licked at his wings. Yet where he had butchered almost all of his attackers, their efforts to banish him had not even slowed the Red Angel. Angron fought like a bloody whirlwind, wheeling, hacking, stomping and roaring as he sought to slaughter the last of the warriors who opposed him. Even as Azrael watched in dismay, the demon Primarch's axe ripped through Commander Dante's personal banner bearer and hurled the bifurcated sanguinary guard across the tower, 
fresh blood soaked into the fallen standard where it lay. Desperate to aid the blood angels, appalled at the price they had paid in their attempt to aid his warriors, Asriel raised Lion's wrath and opened fire upon Angron. The Deathwing needed no order to follow his lead. A fusillade of fire split the air between the platform and the tower top, deadly accurate despite the range. Angron roared in fury as he was peppered with rounds, some of which ripped through his corporeal form in gouts of molten gore. As the demon Primarch whirled towards his new attackers, a golden armored figure rocketed from atop a broken stairway and swung his glowing axe at Angron. Fast as fury, the demon Primarch spun, ignoring the Dark Angel's firestorm as he parried Commander Dante's attack. A shockwave exploded out as Spinegrinder met the Axe Mortalis. Angron staggered back from the exchange. Dante, by comparison, was smashed from the air and into the steps hard enough to crack them. He lay still and did not rise. Azriel cried out in dismay as Angron threw back his head and roared his triumph. The Blood Angel's chapter master lay defenseless before him, open to the killing blow. Yet as Azriel watched, powerless, shadows suddenly coiled about the Red Angel and his victim. Tendrils of mist obscured the figures, and from amidst the vapors spread incongruous green shoots of what looked to Azriel like plant life. Shifting shapes unfurled, resembling nothing so much as a sketch of a dream of half-remembered trees, their dense bows more shadow than substance. In the next instant, Azriel's bewilderment gave way to awe. A tall figure in a flowing cloak stepped from the mists to place himself between Angron and Dante. Space Marines in black armor manifested around him and spread out down the steps. But Azriel barely noticed them. He could only stare at the warrior with the glowing blade and glinting shield. It did not matter that Azriel had only seen him before in tapestries, frescoes, and stained glass. His very blood knew this warrior's identity. His gene seeds sang with the truth, teetering as close to being overwhelmed as it was possible for a space marine to come. Azriel went to one knee. He was looking at the lion returned to his gene sons at the hour of their greatest need. Some part of Azriel squirmed with dread, for the Primarch had also returned in time to witness the sins of the unforgiven writ large. His mind whirled with self-recriminatory images, the rock defiled by invasion, Luther's escape, the horrors unleashed by the Tekulture engine. Yet even these memories could not undermine the surge of raw vitality and exultation that galvanized Azriel at the sight of the lion, alive and returned. The Battle Brothers of the Dreadwing bellowed amazed oaths as words spread from one band of Dark Angels to the next. The survivors of the strike force surged into their foes with redoubled zeal. The top of the tower, even Angron had paused to glare at his former brother. Yet the spell was broken as the Red Angel howled and launched himself at the lion. Their mighty blades clashed again and again, sparks raining from each impact. The sword Samniarius struck the lion's shield and rebounded in a concussive pulse of light and force. Several of the black armored space marines who accompanied the lion lunged to take advantage of the opening in the demon Primarch's guard, 
and only now did Asriel register with disquiet their resemblance to warriors of the fallen. Angron swept Spinegrinder in a roaring arc, and bloodied corpses scattered away from him. Asriel saw the lion bark in order, and suddenly the black armored warriors melted away down the tower steps towards the battle below. The lion now backed away from his foe, and Angron stormed after him. Asriel realized this was no retreat, but rather an attempt to draw Angron away from the fallen Dante. Back and forth across the tower top, the two demigods battled, Angron raining a constant storm of blows upon his foe, while the lion demonstrated sublime martial skill in fending off or evading every strike. Flames and roiling mist whirled about the two combatants, tattering apart each time another shockwave burst from the lion's shield. Azriel was torn away from the spectacle as a hail of bolt shells whipped up from below to ricochet from the Deathwing Terminator's formidable armor. Vox amplified hells rose, warning of a fresh band of world eaters storming up the gantries from street level to assault Azriel's position. He realized he'd been entranced by his gene size arrival, but that there was a battle to be fought in the here and now. But even as he rose and let fly into the foes climbing up from below, Azriel could not deny himself a last glance at the tower top. He was in time to see the lion backing towards the edge of the tower, trading blows with Angron, still fighting defensively as though to goad his berserk opponent. Between one blade swing and the next, L. Johnson looked directly at Azriel, and their eyes locked. The sensation of his prime mark's regard hit Asriel like a physical blow. Fire seemed to race through his veins. No words could they exchange, yet in that moment the Supreme Grand Master knew precisely what his gene sire wished of him. L. Johnson was risking himself to draw the rampaging demon Primark away, not only from his own scions but from the Blood Angels also. That left Commander Dante, and any others of his honor guard who might still cling to life, lying wounded amidst the ruins. There was a blood debt here, a matter of honor and duty that the Dark Angels could not ignore. Asriel had his quest from his liege lord, and he would see it completed. Whatever came after, he would deal with it if he lived that long. The lion leapt from the tower top and vanished from sight. Roaring his hate, Angron lunged in pursuit. Brandishing the Sword of Secrets, Asriel stepped forth to meet his own onrushing foes. For the lion! He bellowed. His war cry was taken up by the Deathwing and then by all the Dark Angels fighting in the Warped Forge Palace. Soon, the air rang with their shouts. Even over the thunder of battle and the endless churning of the planet's infernal machines. For the Lion! And the Emperor!